Hey fly tires, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying up a little rubber legged evil weevil. This is a variation of Jeremy Davies original evil weevil and I've got uh, these are actually silicone legs but you can interchange them with the rubber legs. I prefer to use silicone as it doesn't become brittle as quickly as the rubber legs do. After a season of having the rubber legs in your box or whatever, they can become super brittle and they'll just fall apart kind of thing. So I, I do prefer the silicone. And these just come from a bass skirt. And each bass skirt will give you 21 uh, legs. So it's, it's an easy choice to make. Don't forget to leave a message in the comments and I'll get you entered into our next draw. So let's have a look at the material list and get started. Let's get a fresh hook in the vise. Today we're going to be using a fire hole stick and this is about a barbless hook. This is model number 315 and we're going to be using a size 12. I just uh, put a bead on here already. This is a tungsten and it's a 3.3 millimeter bead and um, we're just going to tip that hook forward a little bit just to make it a little bit easier to get access to the back end where we tie in the tail and our body materials. So for thread we're going to be using 70D Olive UTC and we'll just start that off behind the bead. If you want to add a little bit extra weight you can go ahead and put a few wraps of spooled weight in behind the bead. So we'll just wrap our thread up kind of about midway down that hook shank. Then we're going to take a few fibers of pheasant tail. So somewhere between four to eight fibers should be lots. Might have a couple more than that. That's fine. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball that and tie that on on top of the hook shank. And once we got the length and the orientation of that where we want it, we're just going to go ahead and spiral up our thread just to kind of bind that down. Trim off the butt ends of that. And next we're going to add a piece of wire. I've got some gold wire here. This is the brassy size for the number 12. I uh, would go with a smaller size if uh, you're tying a smaller fly. And we'll just tie that in along the close side. And down into where we tied the tail in. That's a good spot to stop. And then we'll take our thread back up. Just put that wire in our material clip. So next we're going to take a piece of olive scud back material or midge flex or something similar. And we're going to tie that in behind the bead as well just to kind of keep our body nice and even. We're just going to catch that in behind the bead and then kind of stretch it and pull pull it along on top of the hook shank. You want to just try to make sure that it doesn't travel too far over to one side with the thread torque. For dubbing we're going to be using some olive dubbing. This is uh, an acrylic mix that I, I mixed in a little bit of black and a little bit of flash in there. Not an awful lot. Maybe 5-10% to 10 flash, 20% uh, black, and then the rest a uh, nice light olive. So it gives a little bit more natural mottled look. So we're going to just dub that on in a few thin noodles. Just kind of build up a little bit of a taper towards the bead. We're going to leave lots of space in there because we're going to add a thorax to this fly. And when you have a taper that you think is good, we're just going to pull that scud back with a midge flex over top. And we're going to catch it with a couple wraps of thread. And 
this is probably a good spot just to flip your fly back upright so it's a little bit easier to work on. All right, so we'll just keep that scud back out of the way. And then we're going to wrap up over the top of the scud back. And you want to be careful that you don't pull the scud back over as you're wrapping. And then once we get up to the top, we will give that wire an extra loop around the hook shank. We can pull that scud back, back towards the back of the hook. And then we'll tie everything off. We'll give a few wraps of thread just to make sure everything's secured really well. And then make sure that wire is tied off really well and then pull it tight and then a few helicopters and it should pull off fairly quickly. All right, so there's a couple of ways to build the thorax here. You can go ahead and put the legs straight on right now or we can add a little bit of a buffer underneath there. And that's what we're going to do. We're just going to take a little bit of our dark olive dubbing. And I'll put a link in the description to where I created these dubbings. You can make your own. Uh, this is a darker olive version. Then we're going to take a silicone leg. This is just from a bass skirt. This is one of the legs. Usually you get about 21 or 22 strips. And we're going to cut that in half. And we're going to lay that on top of the hook on the thorax and give that a couple loose wraps just to kind of give it a bit of secure. And then what we want to do is pinch each side and kind of pull those legs down just so that they are on the side of the uh, thorax there. And when you got them in place, you can go ahead and add a few extra wraps just to secure them. And then we're going to go ahead and add a little bit more dubbing just to kind of uh, dub over top of the thread wraps and the legs. Don't worry about the length. We'll trim those off before we finish our fly up. So you want this thorax to be a little bit fatter than your body. Just gives a nice uh, tasty morsel for the fish to target. All right, that looks pretty good. So we'll pull those legs back and put a wrap in front. And you can continue to adjust those legs as you see fit. And we'll just pull the legs back and we'll pull the scud back forward and we'll add a couple thread wraps just to secure it in place before we trim it. And I always like to leave a little bit of a buffer. I don't like to cut it flush to the bead just because it is a little bit stretchy and it'll pull back. So now we will just kind of secure up the head. We'll add a whip finish there. Make sure you pull the legs back so you don't tie those down. And then you can either finish the fly using a regular head cement or Sally Hansen's or you can add a UV resin which is what I'm going to do here. Now the benefit of the UV resin is it kind of gives a little bit of an exaggerated look to the wing case, sort of like a trapped air bubble on an emerging fly. Uh, but it also gives you a really solid um, finish on the fly. So we just add a dab of the Solares Thin Hard, and then we'll zap that with our UV light a couple seconds just to let that set. Now the last thing we need to do is just trim up those legs. These are a little bit long. So what I do is I pull everything up together and I cut it about a thumb width or a little bit shorter. And I cut them all together. That way I've got all the legs are the same length. If you want to shorten them up a little bit more, that's uh, totally fine. Uh, I would rather leave them a touch long than short. Hey Fly Tires, thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos. If you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly patterns, tips and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. 
You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.